Welcome to The Source, where we combine the headlines with in-depth conversations with the newsmakers themselves. Today, on the program, a sea of humanity, a devotion. Nasa deboto mo naman yan eh. Kung talagang ano ka sa Panginoon, eh, lahat naman sinasagot niya na sa Reno. A display of unwavering faith. Makisapuntay sa kanila, aking po silang buhatin at inakbay kasama ng pakitipaglakbay ni Jesus sa atin. We get to know stories of devotion and faith in this year's Traslasyon. And later, iPhone turns 11 this year. We take a look back at the smartphone's milestone on today's In Focus. Thank you for joining us. I'm Pinky Webb. Every January 9th, millions of Filipino Catholics join the procession of the Black Nazarene or Traslacion. Our Andrew Alimario talks to the rector of Quiapo Church on the preparations and to devotees on how the Nazarene changed their lives. 66-year-old Sonia Tala de la Rosa becomes emotional as she recalls how her devotion to the Black Nazarene started. <laughs> Kasi sa dami na naging problema natin dito, di ba? Siguro ito yung binigay sa akin. Tumutulong ako sa mga tao, tumutulong ako sa lahat. Sabot na nga ako makakaya. She claims she was gifted by the Black Nazarene. Tumutulong ko. Ito yung palad ko siyang ginagamit ko sa mga tao. Donna de Alomo says she has so much to be thankful for because of her devotion to the Black Nazarene. Ano naman na Diyos na pagaling niya yung mga sakit ng apo ko. And she doesn't mind the long hours of walking barefoot under the sweltering heat or heavy downpour. For her, it's all about faith. Nasa deboto mo naman yan eh. Di po ba? Kung talagang ano ka sa Panginoon, kasi lahat naman sinasagot niya na sa Reno. But what is it about the Black Nazarene that moves millions of Filipino Catholics to gravitate to it? Sa totoo lang, marami mga miracles ito yung sa mga ordinaryong tao. Naakala mo pang Biblia lang, pero talagang nangyayari. Ako rin ay nabibighani. Yung dapat bulag itong batang ito, nakakakita. Dapat patay itong apo niya, pero buhay. Coronel is already anticipating more devotees to participate this year. As early as now, Coronel is already appealing to the public. May mga nakainom dyan, mga lasing. Eh, hindi naman ito panahon. Galangin naman ang poong senyor. To pregnant devotees, Coronel pleads to them not to go near the andas carrying the Black Nazarene. Kung meron kayo napansin na kahinahinala, ipagbigay po natin ito, nakita natin sa ating otoridad, sa kapulisan at sa mga uh, sundalo natin. To those who have delicate heart conditions or other grave illnesses, Coronel advises them not to join anymore. Coronel hopes this year's traslasyon will be meaningful and successful and that just like the previous year, there will be no casualty. Anjali Mario, CNN Philippines. Let's go straight to the source of the story. Anjali Mario is at Bonifacio Memorial Shrine in Manila. Anjo, give us the highlights of today's procession. What are the people's reactions? Pinky, the Andas carrying the Black Nazarene has yet to reach our area here in Liwasang Bonifacio. But as early as now, the entire stretch of Piburgos is slowly being filled with devotees of the Black Nazarene. Uh, a sea of yellow and uh, maroon occupies the area. And we're here actually at the westbound lane of the Piburgos, where the Traslacion will be heading later. It's actually a departure from the usual route of taking the eastbound lane, the opposite side of Piburgos, going to... Uh, to Jones Bridge. Now it's the westbound day. The organizers want that to make the route safer for the devotees. They want to actually avoid the Lagusnilad area. So so it's also actually picky. We're near the uh, prayer station. It's actually behind us. One of the 12 prayer stations set up by the Quiapo Church along the procession route. And according to uh, Quiapo Rector Monsignor uh, Hernando Coronel, it's actually to make the translation more meaningful, more spiritual. And it's also the, the station is also 
also manned by medical units and police personnel ready to respond in case of emergency. It's also good to know there's actually a water station here right beside us, right beside our life point, ready to give free water to the devotees to keep them hydrated. And there's also a huge tent set up by the Red Cross, the Dariwasang Bonifacio, again, ready to assist devotees. And we actually talked to some of the devotees here, and they say they don't mind the long hours of walking, even barefoot, not to mention the sweltering heat, just as long as they're able to go near the Andas, or at least get to see the image of the Black Nazarene. And we're able to meet 67-year-old Flora Galicia, who tells us uh, she, she knows that at her age, it's already difficult to join the translation. But she's here, and she says it's because of for devotion to the Black Nazarene. We also met a devotee. He, he said he had polio when he was younger. He couldn't walk, but his mother would take him to Kiapo Church and pray to the, to the Black Nazarene. And true enough, only years after, he began walking. And that's, what he, that's why he became a devotee of the Black Nazarene. It's, it has become a, an, an, annual uh, an annual devotion for him to join the annual procession of the Black Nazarene. So Piki, these, are, these are just some of the testimonials of the devotees that we were able to talk to on why they join the translation and why they keep on coming back year after year. It's a phenomenon, according to uh, Monsignor Coronel, that is unique to the Philippines and we should be proud of it. Pinky? Thank you, Angel Alimario, reporting from the Bonifacio Memorial Shrine in Manila. Hundreds of thousands of devotees gather in Manila for the feast day of the Black Nazarene. Ijos del Nazareno member and painter Brian Villarreal is one devotee who believes the suffering image of Christ performs miracles. This week on the story of the Filipino, he recounts how the Black Nazarene gave a member of his family a second chance at life. <laughs> Nasareno, naghihirap, dapa. Kaya kayo lalong naghihirap, sabi nilang ganun. Kabaligtara naman yung tingin namin doon. Kaya naghihirap para tumatag ka. Tataga mo yung loob mo, di ba? Yung mga pinagdadaanan mo sa buhay. Ako po si Brian Villarreal. Mga masan, ang mahal na po ang Senyor Nasareno. Pinagumpisa akong pumasan yung grade 6 or grade 5. Kasi nung panahon noon, ang prosesyon, Meron yung pambata. Sa kadena, puro bata yan. Pagka tumaob ka, nakaikot siya mga mamamasa na matatanda, tuturuan ka. O pag bumagsak ka, tumayo kayo. Pag may bumagsak, iangat nyo. Ilang beses akong nadisgrasya dyan. Mga grade 6, grade 5 ako. Habang papalapit yung prosesyon, sumisikip yan. Naiipit kami ngayon dun. Inangat kami. Pag-angat ka, alam mo, may aircon sa mukha mo dahil ang tagal mong naipit, ang init. Nagpe-painting ako, may hilig ako mag-observe ng mga, mga nangyayari, mga tao. Eh. Kita ko lang sa kaya po, may tato sa ulo ng nasareno. Medyo ibang klase ang panata niya. Most 400 years ata na nandiyan dyan ay nasa reno sa atin. Ngayong kaya po eh, pang masa, madali makapunta. Pang ano, kailan mga humihingi ng tulong, nabibigyan, yung naglumuluhod dyan. Yung, siyempre, pag tag tagal ng tagal niyan, dumadami. Yung inaikwento, may siguro yung isa may kagaya ko, limbawa, na may napagaling o gano'n, naikwento. Kaya dumadami. Taon-taon niyan, sabi ng simbahan, talagang dumadoble Hindi nawawala yung January 9 eh. Bakit ganun ka ano ang tao sa Nazareno? Dahil yun na bypass yung father ko. Sabi ko, pagdadasal ko kay Nazareno. Na nakasurvive naman. Sabi nga sa akin ng doktor namin, kayo na ko ba nagdadasal? Lakas mo na sa santo mo ha. Sabi ko, taga kaya po po. Ah, yung Nazareno. Sabi niya gano'n. Ang galing yan. This is the source on CNN Philippines. Still to come, we explain the devotion to the Black Nazarene with Monsignor Sabino Benko after the break. And later, iPhone celebrates its 11th year. A look at the phone's milestones on today's In Focus.
watching The Source on CNN Philippines. Joining us today, theologian Monsignor Sabino Venko of Loyola School of Theology at the Ateneo. Father, thank you so much for being here. So much to talk about, but let me start with this. Um, can you explain to us? A number of people have already tried to do it, but really the devotion to the Black Nazarene. Why this kind of devotion? Filipinos, with our own natural religiosity, have found in this black image something to focus on, to identify with. First of all, the color. Finally, always keep in mind that during the Spanish period, there is that color discrimination. White is beautiful, brown, black. You are local, you are native, you are second class. And to have a Lord and Savior of your color, that was a very big plus already psychologically. And that's why the Filipinos uh, gravitated. Uh, gravitated to the Nazareno. Is that really so, Father, because of the color? Um, because That's we, only one. Yeah. That's only one. There is another, and it is this. We are a poor country, and suffering and pain, that is part and parcel of how to live, to exist in these islands. To have someone suffering, and to know that it is for you, Oh, that was the biggest, the biggest point why the suffering Jesus, the black Nazarene, provided for the Filipinos something to pour their own religiosity upon. But that's, that I think is the one that kind of confuses me because if we talk about the kind of sacrifice that we see in the black Nazarene, that is the sacrifice Jesus Christ has made, carrying the cross for all our sins. Yes. So uh, why is there a distinction between, let's say, the Jesus Christ that was taught to us in school versus the black Nazarene? Well, there is really no distinction except that this particular image emphasizes, puts the stress on that moment of suffering. And that moment of suffering for the Philippines is very, very uh, eloquent. Underneath the cross and yet People will say that again and again, standing up, mm. not giving up. Here comes in the Filipino resiliency. Bakit tayo, we never give up. Mas kinagano kahirap ang trabaho. Di ba ano? Ano ba yung cobra? <laughs> <laughs> so, yun, yun ang, yun ang uh, mahalaga sa atin yan. Yeah. At, so, uh, to identify with someone because he takes the initiative, he is there for us. Kaya naman, yung tao ngayon, we are there for you. Yan ang ibig sabihin itong procession and the millions that watching the to, to, be, to be part of it. Yeah. Siya ay naroon para sa atin noon hanggang ngayon. At very specifically in the narratives of individuals. When you talk about the narratives, Father, I actually wanted to bring that in because one of the devotees was actually telling um, our reporter that what happens is word of mouth. Siguro pagpunta sa Kiapo, nabigyan ng milagro, a miracle happened, na ikwento. It, it, it's really word of mouth from one person to another. Kaya din huba siguro dumami, uh, patuloy yung pagdami ng mga devotees sa Black Nazarene. Very, very important point. Oral tradition. Oral tradition, first of all, is the cheapest, the most natural, and everyone can get involved in it. <laughs> and it, it does not require a diploma or anything. Number two, then it offers itself for the magnification and self-modification by the narrator. Every time someone passes on a story, it has its own uh, peculiarity already. Right. Uh, that's but, 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 but Father, that could be the same with saints as well. Exactly. Hagiography, uh -huh. narrations of holiness. This time, it is the powerful interventions in favor of the poor and the suffering yeah. on the part of Jesus. Would you say that in the years that have passed that are in the future, are we expecting more devotees of the black Nazarene to continue to multiply? I do not think that at first the devotion would disappear because suffering is a human lot under whichever administration or under whatever utopic vision and horizon, people will suffer sickness, old age, mortality. Health, yes. Yes, and the question of relationships broken. So pain and suffering will always be there. There will always be need for someone. And that is exactly Jesus, Alpha and Omega, mm -mm. without end for us. Right. 
But then again, that brings me back to my earlier question is why the black Nazarene? It could be the Jesus that we've studied um, since we were young. The, the image of the Jesus that we know. I know you're saying, uh, Father, that this is just really a, a, the black Nazarene, but this, this, this gravitation towards the, the, the black Nazarene is quite unprecedented. Yes. Well, uh, you have been referring to the Jesus we come to know in school. Yes, and, uh, in our religion our classes. Parents. Exactly. <laughs> but, well, so that is more generic. And that is a stranger, a foreigner. Now, Jesus comes to us with his own, shall we say, uh, exclusively for Asians. And that is what is happening, actually. We Filipinos are in the process, the last 200 years, of creating the Asian Jesus, the one who identifies with the poor and the suffering, the one you can count on. And that is a very important element in the Asian context of so much change, so much mobility, change everywhere, and, uh, and administrations, politicians, programs, whatever. And there is one, unchanging. When you say it's for the poor, Father, do the poor relate Obviously, the poor relate, you're saying, to the black Nazarene, but does the rich also, do the rich also relate to the black Nazarene as well? Because when you talk about suffering, suffering is universal. Exactly. And when I refer to poor, it's not economic poor exclusively. Yeah. It is rather humanity in all its forms, uh, suffering its own neediness and limitedness. That is poverty. Yeah. That is the poor. Because uh, it is true, Father, that suffering is not, well... Um, Focused, yeah. Uh, ex yeah. yeah, privately done. I mean, it's not exclusive for the poor. Yeah. Rather, is what I mean. Um, the kind of the kind of miracles, because of the Black Nazarene that you've heard of so far. What does that make you feel, or how do you understand it um, as a theologian? Well, that uh, God is true to His commitment to humanity, to be there for them. Jesus is the man for others. And that is exactly the subtitle of the Black Nazarene. The man for others. And, and that's what we need. Any generation, whether you are adolescent or with the wisdom of the years, you need someone. We all need someone. And he's there. Monsignor, thank you so much. I know that uh, Mont Father will still be guesting later in uh, our 10... AM Newscast Newsroom. So more of the history and the devotion to the Black Nazarene by Monsignor Sabina Benko. Watch out for that at 10 in the morning. Again, Father, maraming salamat po sa'yo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Manila Archbishop Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle has a reminder to the Catholic faithful while National Police Chief Ronald De La Rosa speaks up on what he feels about the Traslacion tradition. Wag po nating kakalimutan at huwag po nating ihihiwalay sa ating sarili ang mga kapatid natin na nagturusa, mga kapatid natin na nasalanta ng mga bagyo, mga kapatid natin sa Marawi na nagpapasan ng kanilang mga krus. Makisa po tayo sa kanila at po silang buhagin at ilakbay kasama ng pakikipaglakbay ni Jesus sa atin. Pasan-pasan din ang ating mga krus. Itong mas na ito, iba yung feeling, iba yung feeling ko. Uh, Matayong lahibo ko. <laughs> Dahil uh, hindi ako sanay sa ganito na malaking crowd na nga, sabi ko ka na, yung lison, sabay-sabay nagkakantahan, sabay-sabay na nagdarasal, what time was, para magiging panata ko na yan. Oh, yeah? So, ito nga, mabang buhay tayo, huwag kakayanin. Kung hindi ako harangin nila, sasampa ako eh. Thousands of uniformed men and women as well as some volunteer groups are deployed to keep the peace during the Traslacion. Over 6 million people are expected to join the procession throughout the day. 
It's all about the translation on social media with devotees tweeting before and during the procession. Take a look. Twitter user Chai prays for protection and guidance for everyone who will attend the translation. This Twitter user is also asking for guidance, especially for the hijos del Nazareno. This devotee managed to get a selfie with PNP Chief Ronald De La Rosa, who heard Mass at the Quirino Grandstand earlier today. Well, this one posts a photo of the Black Nazarene with a caption, Walang sawang pasasalamat, Ama. This is the source on CNN Philippines coming up the history of one of the world's most loved smartphones. That's for today's In Focus. Time now for today's In Focus here on The Source. It's a special day for Apple as the iPhone turns 11 years old. Let's look back to where it all began. Thank you for joining us here on The Source. I'm Pinky Webb.